All right, what's up, beautiful people? Welcome to the Dinner True Den Sessions brought to you by JD Sports. So today, I'm very excited about this episode. You know, we've got someone who I've been following for a while, um, someone that set a lot of trends in Australia, Sydney especially. Um, man, and just someone who I fuck with. So uh, today we have Marnie, man, what's good? Hi, brother. Man, this has been a long time in the making. 100%. I had to do it like this. 100%. I had to get you like 100%. this. 100%, let's go. Man, so, uh, you see the vibes? Man, you see, come you on, see man. Can we get this? Can we get like a zoom in right there? Come on. Man, nah, it's a beautiful place, man. It's a beautiful day. For sure. It's like, especially over the last two years, especially with COVID and everyone mm. sort of being inside, I guess, you know, how have you dealt with it? and. What, what sort of things have you been doing to sort of cope and, and, and deal with it? Just making more music, eh? Making more music, just like, just kind of like sharpening, like sharpening up my, my craft, I'd say, you know? And just getting ready for like when we're able to do shows, able to tour. Well, it's good you talked about your touring history because that's, that's one of the things that I sort of want to dive into. Oh, yeah. You know, there's been a lot of great artists in Australia that have blown up in the last two years or so mm. who really haven't had the opportunity to do a show. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that um, the most important thing is that, you know, there's a difference between putting out content on YouTube and putting out music mm -hmm. and, getting, and convincing someone to pay their hard-earned mm. money yeah, to go see simple. you live. How did you set up your live set? How did you go about it? And I guess, what does sort of performing live mean, to, mean for you? I mean, for me, I feel like one of my strongest, like, I say assets is like just performing live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's like, I don't know if you ever seen a show. I've seen a show, man. You know like, how you see me in the crowd, man, I've been there. It's like, you know, it's like energetic. So I feel like people really like enjoy themselves when they see me like live. Even, I think even more than like just listening to my music, you know what I mean? Like, they're really like, like they're sold, like once they see me live, you know what I mean? And it's like, I take pride in that. So what do you say to like the, the newer artists who are sort of trying to figure that out? You know what I mean? Because a lot of people don't, you know, don't even understand that, that like, you know, your life set is also a business. Yeah. Like, you know, your streaming music is a business. For sure. You know what I mean? Branding is a business, you For know what sure. I mean? Certain artists are stronger in certain aspects. 100%. So what do you say to like artists who are trying to figure that out? You know, what's some of the, some, some of the things that helped you figure that out as well? I did like a lot of like openings as well, you know what I mean? And like, I think like for me, like I worked in the clubs as well. So I yeah. think like MCing that kind of like helped me like, kind of like know what like a crowd wants to hear or like just like certain like cues, I can get like a crowd G'd up, you know what I mean? It's just like, the, like the only difference is like, I'm just playing my own songs. If I touch a stage, like any stage, you know what I mean? Like as long as like my, like my music is lit, I, any stage I touch like, I'm gonna kill that shit, you know what I mean? You say like, oh, like, what isn't, like, do I have any advice for like any up and comers? It's yeah. like, it's just practice, really. Practice. Yeah, 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 that's what I gotta say. Yeah, practice in front of a mirror? How do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> practice nah, anyway. fucking throw yourself out there, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, you gotta, like, you, you gotta, you gotta do it all, bro. Like, I did like the small shows, I did like the big shows, so it's like, with the small intimate shows, it's like, you know, there's, you learn a lot from that, you know what I mean? Like, you, like because like you can't just go like you can't just go out there and just keep like like jump around or like just be hype all the time because it's it's a very intimate thing. Like, yeah. like you need to fucking go and fucking spit your lyrics, let people feel that shit. So, I don't know. I just learned a lot from just doing small shows and like then to like the big festivals. Yeah, I can take a lot from all, like all of that and just that like that kind of helped me. You know, how was it when you guys initially went overseas? Mm. You know what I mean? When you did shows in Canada, New York, you know, mm. in Greece. Mm. How was that experience? And you know, what are sort of some of the things that you learned over there? I guess like when things started picking up, you know what I mean? People started like hearing my music from like overseas and stuff. One of the first shows I got booked for was Greece, right? With that, we were like, yo, if, if we're gonna go all the way from Australia to Greece, let's plan a whole tour. So, you know, we did Greece, Germany, we did Paris. There's a couple more shows, you know, and like, just going out to Greece was just crazy, like, cause I went to this place like Thessaloniki and like, they don't really speak English out there. And like, this is my show, you know what I mean? They had like two openers or something. I got out there, the energy was wild. They were singing word for word and like, you know, I got shit on YouTube, like. So it was a big trip for me to be like, yo, like these people heard my music. I'm from Australia, bro, like, you know, like, 
they're saying a word for word. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. they're saying a word for word. Like yeah. they don't even, like they can barely even speak English, bro. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy. And like, you know, from there I was like, you feel like unstoppable, bro. Like you yeah. Know? And yeah. like you see how powerful like I guess music is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean music translation is like whole different. All, all different languages, man. It's a powerful language. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, especially over the last three years, people have been inside, man. Like, people have been consuming a ton of content. Mm. Now that you've done that, now you sort of had a taste of domestic touring and international touring, you know, what's sort of inspiring you musically right now? Mm. What's sort of getting you up in the morning and actually getting you excited? For me, just trying to, like, level up, like, get better. I like pushing the sound, so it's, like, crafting, like, something that's never been done before. Doing that, I'm able to like create a lane for myself and then it's like I started that. More yeah. so than like this was hot, so I'm gonna jump on that. It's like nah, I'm gonna create my own thing. Like sometimes it's like it doesn't catch straight away because people people don't understand what you're trying to do, but you know, down the line like you see people like appreciate it because it's like it stands out, you know? Yeah. I, man, I think it was great that you brought that up because that was sort of sure. something that I wanted to have a chat to you now. You know? um, I wanted to sort of get into like, you know, what your thoughts are on the current music scene and that whole concept of being original. Sure. Um, I think now we've seen like, you know, the increased popularity of drill music mm -hmm. in Australia especially. And that's dope too. Like, you know, it's great to see artists gravitating and trying different things. For sure. But like, you know, yeah. It's just very rinsed because everybody's mean, doing the same thing, yeah. you know what I mean? How did you stay away from that and, you know, what are your thoughts on the music scene? Like, keep doing me, really. Because yeah. I feel like I was before that, the whole drill movement, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was already crafting something. Say, like, drill to be hot right now and then for me to, like, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'm a fucking driller now, now. It's like, I still keep doing, like, what I do, like, because at the end of the day, I have my own, like, niche, like, you know what I mean? I have, yeah. Like, I have my own market. That's the thing, too, people don't understand, like, you can have your own market, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't have to, like, necessarily be like, oh, I'm trying to be, like, mainstream or, like, whatever. It's like, you can have your own market, you know what I mean? Like, you can have people from fucking Asia listening to your shit, and, like, you can do tours. You can be huge in, like, Europe, Asia, like, you know what I mean? Just, like, just, like things like that. Just, like, like, yeah, just being me. How do you stay original then? You know what I mean? How do you stay true to yourself, especially with all the other influences around you? Mm. You know, whether that be like, you know, the likes, whether that be the streams, whether mm. that just be the immediate, you know, gratification. Mm. You know, what, what are some of the things that keep you grounded mm. and keeps you away from that clout chasing? Yeah, unique, hey. I'm always like searching, hey, like, I always want to try something new. I pride myself on like trying to be different. Like if I do something and I feel like it's like already out there, I will like scrap it and be like, yeah, let me do something that like I never even heard before. Like, you know what I mean? Whether it's the tone, the flow, like whatever, the, like, like in saying that, I still like incorporate like current stuff in my music. You have to find a way to like, you know what I mean, reel people in and then bang, it's like, all right, this is what I actually do. They appreciate it because at the end of the day, it's, it's quality, bro, like, yeah, that's what it is. You I want you to give me your top five favorite Australian artists. I fuck with Baby Prince, I fuck with Blessed. Mm -hmm. I fuck with James, I fuck with um, Hefs. Okay. Um, yo, tell me some names, like, who, like, who else is out here? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I think, like, all those that are named, Yeah, right? look, look, four is good. I think they've got mad potential, like, yeah. after, the, like, this whole drill wave, yeah. those that can stand on their own, yeah. it's those that are named, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, like, I work with those people because I feel like they've got the potential to take it to, the, like, the next level. After, like, that whole hype dies. I know that, you know, growing up where you grew up, especially because you grew up in Western Sydney, there's a lot of influences now based on, you know, a lot of artists and a lot of people speaking about, you know, the region. Mm -hmm. And I think some, sometimes what happens is people just generalise it and don't understand that Western Sydney is a large area, you know. Mm -hmm. There's more people in Western Sydney than there is in South Australia, right? True. So it, it's a large area with a lot of different cultures. Okay. Um, so that being said, I guess, what are some of the things that you look for uh, when you're making music to draw sort of influence from that area? Man, I, f I feel like people are just starting to like embrace like the worst more and like the area and stuff, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just cause of like people like, of course like, like the drill wave, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it came through and it's like, you know, like they were using like the, like the Aussie accent or, or it was very prominent, you know what I mean? And like things that like they're saying, it's like real and like people can relate to it from the West. So I feel like people are like, oh shit, like these people are making 
like noise and like they're from this area and like what they're saying actually like I can actually relate to what they're saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they it, it, it made them like embrace the West more. Going back to I wanna I wanna change gears a little bit. Um, we were in the studio the other day and I think we we're having a conversation about how introverts um, are very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of people say you're a very elusive character. Mm. Right? Through your music, through your personality. Would you say that you're misunderstood? I wouldn't say I'm elusive at all. Like, I feel like people that know me, like, I'm pretty, like, outgoing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I guess it's like, I don't really put myself out, like, like out there like that, apart from, like, my music. Like, you don't really see no other antics and stuff. So, I feel like what I think about me is what's important. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, I hear that. Just, like, point blank, like, that's what's important. I don't think I'm elusive. I think it's just because I don't put myself out there as, like, people would want. You know what I mean? Or like people would like expect. One of the things that we also really wanted to have a conversation on and touch on is sort of the African Australian experience. Mm -hmm. And you had um, the, mu the music video where you're gonna run. But one thing that I liked about it is the placement of different colored kids within the video. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about the where you're gonna run video? And um, you know, what were you thinking about that video when you made it? First of all, I think like the song is just like, would you say it's aggressive? I don't think it's aggressive. I don't, I don't think the song, not in an outward way, trying to be, you know, aggressive and violent, yeah. but I think the messaging that you had with the video yeah. was very precise, for right? Sure. And I think from my, from my perspective, sure. what you were talking about in the music video is that you were talking about people um, stealing the culture. Mm, I, you know, in my, in my I, opinion. I got a line like that. I thought it was more, you know, you were talking about people still in the culture and not talking about the reference points of that. Okay. Right? And now people are running away with something mm. and not giving credit to the people who made it. Like if that the, makes the sense. Yeah. yeah, I feel you. Yeah, so th that's my yeah. opinion, but, but, but like, what were you nah, thinking No, about? I feel like everyone interprets music differently. Like, they're not going to think exactly like what I was thinking, you know? We're even talking about me having, like, black kids in the video and stuff. I grew as, a, like, an, an artist and, like, a human being. Like, I started to understand, like, the importance of like representation and like people actually seeing like black people in like my videos, especially, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, yeah. I would meet some people, right? They thought I was a white guy. Yeah, yeah. I, met, I met, I like, I met, this, <laughs> yeah. I met this dude, it's like, yo, like I thought Mountain Cruz was a, like a white guy. Like what gave that away? Like, well, like you never watched my videos. Yeah, re like representation is important. Like growing, I felt like it's important to like have those pieces and like my visuals. Mm. and communicate that, have people understand like the importance of that. Mm. And, wh and why so now? Like why, do you, why did you feel like you were so important now um, versus you know a bit earlier in your career? And I think you, you already yeah. did, but there's a bit more of an emphasis now. Earlier, like I was kind of just doing it, you know what I mean? I didn't really like understand the full extent of like the influence, you know what I mean? In the past two years, the scene just like bloomed, yeah? And it's like, I meet these kids like these artists, they actually tell me like, yo, we look up to you. Like I started to realize, oh, what I was doing, people from like where I'm from, like which is Western Sydney, they were watching, you know what I mean? And like that inspired them to kind of like get in the booth and like just start spitting shit and like just making music and actually like and realizing that, yo, you can actually do this and like make a living off of it. I feel like before that, not many people from Western Sydney, like there's always been hip hop. Yeah. I feel like no one was representing like Hard, they weren't ripping it hard, yeah. Yeah, like how I was ripping it from like like Western Sydney too, you know what I mean? So just being able to travel and shit, like I started to like understand, oh, okay, like people are watching like their influences, you know, it's like that shit's important, you know? Mm. I just took that into like the new work. I'm just more conscious of it and just like, yeah, just kind of like Im implementing like little things in there. And, and just real quick, the last question I have on the Western Sydney thing, because I think I, don't, I also don't want to be, we don't want to be those guys who keep talking about Western Sydney, because yeah. I feel like sometimes what happens is that people keep it in a bubble, okay. and like people just keep talking about it, yeah. but there's no like advancement of growth. So I guess where do you think, where do you think it's going now? Whether that be the sound, whether that be the culture, what do you think is going to be the next step? I honestly don't know, like, mm -hmm. but I do think like Sydney is like the hub, like, you have people from like Perth, Brisbane and all that, all the other states, they come here to make music. And like when they get here, like they think like, like this is the Mecca, you know what I mean? Like we definitely have like influence on like the rest of Australia. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like where like the music is going and like all that, I couldn't predict that, like, you know what I mean? Like what I can do is like, I can control what I'm doing, like, you know what I mean? And that's just like, 
just taking pride in like standing out and like doing me pretty much, you know what I mean? So obviously you're Ghanaian, man, and I, you rip it hard, whether that be through the merch you wear, yeah. all the stuff that you wear. Yeah. Um, man, your accent, man, you said, you know, like you're African as hell. There's no way, there's no way you can deny it, you know what I mean? Which is a good thing, you know, you, you wear it with, with pride. Yeah, you're supposed to. You know what I mean? So talk about, like, you know, when you went to Ghana, what are some of the things that you learned there and what sort of the vibrations that you brought to Australia? It had been, like, what, 15 years, 15 years since I, like, I actually went back to like going back and like seeing like the improvements out there was crazy and like it's just vibey bro like the culture like and I, like people from all around the world like mm. just out there just enjoying Ghana like you know what I mean and like they have like a nice like like a like scene going yeah. you know what I mean so it was it was like dope to like witness that and like you know like all like the neighboring countries as well like even like artists from like Nigeria and stuff you know what I mean like they're down there yeah. you know what I mean playing the festivals like. I think, yeah, when I was there, like, Rick Ross came down, like, he played a festival, like, it's yeah. lit, bro, and, like, you just see how, like, the way of life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, went, like, yeah, I went everywhere, like, trenches everywhere, like, you know? It just opens your eyes, bro. Yeah. yeah. What's some of the things you learned over there? They're hungry over there, you know what I mean? And it's, like, some of the big artists out there, they're trying to get you in a studio, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter if you're, like, not like super huge, they found out like, yo, this guy's from like Australia, this guy's from the States. They're trying to get in there, get something in there because they want that like, exposure, like, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, like they're big in our country, but they're trying to like step outside the shore. So it's like, yeah, just so having hustle. that. Yeah, the hustle, bro. Let's talk about sort of the African-Australian identity mm. and sort of where that's, you know, where that's evolving. Mm. You know what I mean? But what are your thoughts on the African-Australian community and, you know, the growth of the community and mm. sort of where it's headed to now? Mm, for sure. I think, like, yeah, it's very early. Even, like, just for, like, Westies in general, bro, like, yeah. we're, like, we're, like, heavily, like, influenced by, like, the states and, like, the uh, you, um, our states in our UK, right? Yeah. But then, like, you know, like, with the with the music and like the culture and like everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Like recently, I feel like we're slowly like finding like our, like our own like identity. Yeah. And like being proud to be like, yeah, I'm off for Aussie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like another thing too, it's like when you're overseas, right? It's like people like, you tell people, yeah, I'm from Australia. They're like, bruh, I don't even think there's black people in Australia. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, 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 man. Everyone that just says kangaroos, kangaroos and snakes. That's, it's that's crazy pretty much like people say. But like, that's just from like <laughs> yeah. the fact that it's like, I guess there's no like, like a like a prominent like African Australian that's like, like like big like that. Yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah. People know. Of, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's yeah. not even like their fault. It's just we, we gotta keep building, bro. You know. Yeah, and and that's cool too because it's gonna come. And like we're fly too, so. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, know? man. You see the drip, man. You see how we're trying to come move right now, it's man. It's different out here. Y'all see the interviews, man. Y'all see, see the production, man. You see the see, views. Come on, you see the views. You see the drip. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> you know what I'm um, see? See, but the air, yeah. it's just different, bro. The water's different, yeah? Yeah. But yeah, we're um, coming, we're coming. When can we expect some new music? Some new music. Um, I'm aiming for early next year. I want to start rolling it out. Some singles, you know what I mean? Just see where like, I actually like sit in the whole scene. I got bangers coming, bro, so yeah. early next year. Some of the reasons why I fuck with you mm. is basically because, you know, you're original. We were talking a lot about, you know, identity, mm. right? And building identity. For sure. And, you know, that takes a lot of time to build identity. It's 100%. not just going to happen next year. Or that. And I just feel as if, you know, you're one of the artists who at the very least has an identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. I, and I hear that through your music because I can hear certain singles that you release sonically are changing, you know what I mean? And you're polishing the craft and then, you know, it's starting sure. to drive and it's starting to get bigger. I'm not hating on people who, you know, do specific type of music, which is which is in a way, yeah. do what you got to do. If that, if that feeds your family, go do that. Yeah, for you know sure. what I mean? For but sure. I'm talking about how we're going to build this African-Australian identity mm. and we're going to start being honest. Yeah, 100%. And like, there's so much space to grow as well, you know? Yeah. Like, it's literally like, like our market is like untapped, you know what I mean? And it's like, with the whole like new wave that's going on, it's like, like I said, like there's a few artists that like can stand on their own after this whole thing is like, kind of like fizzling out. I feel like we've got a couple, a couple years till like, you know, like people are actually like tuning in. Yeah. And like that just comes from like, like literally having our own thing. So like when people hear like an Australian artist or like an artist from here, they're like, yeah, 
He's from there. He's from here. You know what I mean? Same way, like when, like when you hear someone from the UK, you know, you hear someone from Atlanta, you know, mm. you hear someone from New York, you know. We need to find out, like our own sound, yeah. like our own identity. I don't think there's there's anything wrong with like drawing inspiration. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, eventually, like you're gonna find your feet. Yeah. You just gotta keep digging. You know. Thank you so much for coming out here, brother. We appreciate you. Thanks I for hope this me, interview bro. did you justice especially the things you've been doing over the last 10 years. You know, I deserve, I think that certain people deserve their credit. You know what I mean? And I think that's something a lot of people don't do. It's all right to give people credit. It's all right, it's all right to give people their flowers. You know what I mean? And we got to celebrate ourselves, man. We got to celebrate each other. You know what I mean? We got to bring each other together. 100%, you know? Super, super deep important. Yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. She want diamonds, she want gold, and she want pearls. She likes fish, she